So one thing that you talked about was how it comes down to good judgment for when it comes to taking the LSAT. Are you ready? Have you studied significantly? Um, probably don't take it if you haven't. When do you recommend that students actually start that studying process though? Whenever you have the time. I mean, for a lot of folks, it could be over a summer break during college or during winter break, the holidays, or if you just have a lighter course load one particular semester in college. But I recommend a minimum of five to six months in order to achieve your fullest potential on the LSAT. Some folks try to do it in two to three months, and that's fine. But if you really want to make the most of this, given the LSAT's importance in the admission process, I would give it more time. So don't take on the LSAT prep while you've got a ton of other things going on. If you can lighten your course load in college or lighten your load at work, or maybe take, be it not have to take a extra, extra time or time and a half at work for overtime, then try to fit in after work. But you really need support from friends, family, employers, colleagues to make this experience that's going to be one that's valuable for you, really giving it the time that it requires. And during that five to six months, is that a certain amount of time per week? Does it change as you go? What, are the, what does that five to six months breakdown to look like? Yeah, great question. So I would say minimum 10 to 15 hours per week. And that could be five hours on the weekend and then an hour or two per day on the weekdays. So it will vary based upon personal situations. And that's, I built in flexibility into my LSAT study plans for that very reason. I built in days off because I recognize that you can't necessarily put in two, three, four hours every single day. I was talking with one student earlier today who is taking it in July and she wanted to put in seven hours a day. And I'm like, how are you going to maintain that for seven, eight months? And she was like, do I run the risk of burnout? I'm like, of course. Like, how long have you been doing this for? Like a week. Well, of course, it's not going to work if you, for that long of time, of course. Other things will come up. Nobody can shut out the rest of the world seven hours a day for seven, eight months. It's just not doable. And if you do that, your, your brain will be totally fried by the end. <laughs> yeah, Slow and sure. steady. Slow and steady wins the race on this one. For sure. And I think it's important that you noted that it does, it does change a little bit based on your situation. If you're in a situation where you can't put in 15 to 20 hours a week, you might need a longer period of time. Um, in my situation, when I was studying, it was really weird. I had like the most hectic schedule of my life while I was studying for the LSAT. And so I would have certain weeks where I had put a big chunk of time and I could study for 20 hours that week. And then I had two weeks in a row where I didn't open a book once. But then my last month of studying was 24 seven, like all I did was study for the LSAT. And so it looked a lot more varied for me. But I agree that if you can do something that's consistent, slow and steady, that's definitely the, the ideal schedule for studying. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.